This is not just another ADK demo. Today we will use Google's framework to build something that actually solves a problem. Step by step, from zero to a working blueprint, we will build an AI factory together, workers, managers, control room, everything a real system needs. When I first started with Google ADK, the docs looked easy, but solving a real problem, that's different. And that's what we're going to do today. I've got material ready so you can follow along, not just watch, build with me. Let's go. First of all, make sure you've cloned my GitHub repository. The link is down below. Go there, clone it, and come back. Pass me if you need to. Now that you have got all the materials, open the first notebook, ADK Blueprint. Use any idea you like. My goal is simple. We will go through this notebook together and build the system together. Not line by line, but just the important pieces you need to know when working with Google ADK. So what are the main building blocks? Google ADK gives you agents, think of them as specialized workers. Then we have the tools. These will let your agents interact with the outside world. They're like the arms and hands of your factory workers. And finally, there are helpers to manage everything like the runner and sessions. If you want more detail, I recommend the official ADK overview. The docs are clear and worth reading, but today our focus is on building a system. Our example is a mini AI news factory, and here is the idea. We pull in news from the internet and decide which ones are relevant. This is a real problem for me because AI news is growing so fast, I don't have time to read them all. So it helps to have a filter. In our factory, we will have two agents or two workers, one the gathering agent, which extracts text from an HTML page, and the triage agent, which decides if the news is worth keeping or rejecting. That's it. Two workers, enough to learn the principles. For this example, I've given you a pre-populated database, newsfactory.db, in the repo. Normally, you would also need a step to scrape the news yourself, but scraping is a big topic on its own, so today we will skip that and focus on ADK. I am confident that after this session, you will be able to add an agent that can scrape news from the internet. So, first things first, install the requirements. I have included a requirements.txt file with all the dependencies. Just create a virtual environment, activate it, and install the requirements. You will also need a Google API key. You can get one from Google AI Studio, save it into the .n file under Google API key. If you're unsure, check the ADK install guide. It explains step by step. Once you have the requirements and the API key ready, we can start building. Before we build anything, we need to define our outcome. Think about the problem you want to solve. What process do you want to automate with Google ADK? I have even prepared a small cheat sheet to help you define your outcome. Let's do it very quickly for today's project. It will extract text from articles and auto triage stories, approve or reject. We will also log the reasoning and show the results in a UI. To get there, we will need a happy path, the steps that lead to success. For us, it's actually pretty simple. Collect the article's HTML, extract the plain text, triage the story for quality and relevance, and log the decisions with reasonings in the UI. I know you might be eager to code, but this step is critical. The value of ADK is not in typing code, it's in solving the right problem. So please take your time and think about it. Once you have your outcome, sketch your pipeline. In our case, the pipeline has just two steps. Extract text, then decide if the story is worth it. Be as detailed as possible. What goes in, what goes out, and if you need a human gift. Now, let's map this pipeline into ADK. And here's the analogy I will use throughout the day. Workers are the editing's agents, specialists with one job. 
tools are the arms and hands of those workers. Managers are the orchestrators. They decide what runs next. The workbench is our database already provided. And the control room is the user interface where we interact with the whole factory. So you see, this is pretty much a real factory. The floor where the workers do their job, the managers who keep everything moving, the workbench with the resources and the control room where you can see the status anytime. Next, let's talk about how ADK wants your files to be structured. Stick to this structure and you will be fine. You need a parent folder and inside it an agents folder. That's where all your agents are. You can also add other folders as well. I like to keep it simple. So I have one core folder where the database lives and one tools folder for the agents tools. And this makes debugging and operating much easier later. Now, the heart of the factory, besides the workers, is the workbench. Think of it as a long bench in a real factory. Each worker comes in, picks up a piece, does their job, and puts the results back. In our case, the workbench is built in a Python script called database.py. It uses SQLite and it contains all the methods the agents and managers use to interact with the workbench. Don't let the size of this file scare you. It's part of a bigger project I run with 15 to 20 agents three times a week. I didn't strip it down for the tutorial and I hope you can forgive me. If you prefer PostgreSQL or Microsoft SQL, whatever, go ahead. Use whatever you have. If you don't have anything yet, you can use my SQLite setup as a starting point. Now let's take a look at the overall diagram. So you can see here we have the factory manager, the workbench, the specialist one and the specialist two. We're going to focus on the gathering agent for now. And this works this way. The factory manager goes into the news items table, selects the ID, the sanitize HTML, everywhere where the status is equals near. Then it gives this information to the gathering agent who is going to extract the text and give it back to the factory manager. The factory manager then takes this and updates the same table, news items, set the status to info complete and put the full article text and the notes. Now, you might ask, why not let the agent pull and push directly from the workbench? And here is why. In AI factories, everything that can be done deterministically should be done deterministically. Agents are terrible at that. They should focus only on one task, nothing else. No looking left, no looking right. Just do their job. The manager takes care of all the rest. We will see the triage workflow later. For now, the key lesson is this. When you design a system, you must be clear clear on how workers and managers interact with the workbench. This might feel tedious, but it's critical. If you want a system that solves real problems without frustration, you need to be clear about these interactions from the very beginning. Also, now that we know how the workbench works and what each worker should do, it's time to hire our first AI worker. Yes, finally, the coding part begins. In Google ATK, creating an agent means following a small structure. Inside your agents folder, create a subfolder for the worker. For example, gathering agent. And inside that folder, you need two files, the init.py to make it discoverable and agent.py where the agent actually lives. The first worker is super simple and doesn't need any tools. We will call it news gathering agent. Its job is get an HTML page and extract the plain text. For this, we don't need a fancy model. I use Gemini 2.0 Flash. It's cheap, fast, and reliable. You could also use a local model if you want. The task is super simple. Now we give it a clear description, extract verba team plain text from sanitize HTML, and then very clear instructions. Your task is to extract the plain text content from the provided HTML. The HTML content will be given in the prompt. Your output should be only the extracted plain text without any additional formatting 
or commentary. If you cannot find any text, return an empty response. And this is important because cheap models tend to summarize things. And what we need right now is to extract the text just as it is. Now let's take a look on how we plan the triage agent to work. And in this case, the manager goes to the data bank to the news agents, selects the ID and the full text article everywhere where we have info complete. It gives it to the specialist. And now compared to the first agent, the specialist goes directly to the data bank and saves its results. So it goes to the news items, change the status to flagged for review and make the recommendation and the explanation why it makes this recommendation. Let me be clear about this. This is not best practice. Normally the manager should handle deterministic steps. Giving that responsibility to the agent adds cognitive load. It can lead to errors, even the horrible 500 error, and you will end up searching for bugs that are not easy to find. But for the sake of this tutorial, I want to show you how tools work with agents. So in this example, we will let the triage agent write directly into the workbench. So first we will build our tools. Start by creating an init.py file inside the tools folders. Now. Here is something super important, the doc strings. In Google ADK, doc strings are not just documentation. They are transformed in the backend into instructions for the agent. So you need to be super precise, explain clearly what the tool does, what arguments it needs, and what it returns. In our case, we build the tool, submit triage decision. It takes the arguments we define, passes them into the database method, submit creation recommendation, and then confirms if it worked. The agent sees that result and we also see a log message printed out. Once we have our first tool, we give it to the agent. That means we create a triage agent folder and add an init.py file and then the agent file. This time the agent needs to be smarter. So I'm choosing 2.5 flash because it's still cheap and delivered the results I'm expecting. So we need to put the description and then we need to go very, very clear on the workflow. So we start by analyzing, analyzing the story. We apply a simple test and then we make a decision if the story is approved or rejected. And then we ask the agent to submit the verdict. And we make this by calling the submit triage decision, which is a tool with the following arguments. So we need to explain the agent exactly how to use it and what we are expecting from him. Then we give, of course, the reasoning, the logic behind the decision of the agent. This is where you will need to spend some time tuning it and making it yours. And then we pass the tools under tools. And now we do a quick sanity check. So one more thing, you are not limited to Gemini. Google ADK works with OpenAI, Cloud, and even local models. It's very flexible. You just need the right API keys. For today, we will keep things simple and we will stick to Gemini. Now we have reached the next stage. And for me, the most challenging one, the manager, because Unlike agents and tools, this part is not really standardized in ADK. And that's also the beauty of it. You can shape it exactly the way you need. And I encourage you, don't just use the default sequential agent from ADK. Define your own manager. And the reason for that is that Google ADK has to keep a lot of things available in the background for the agents. API calls, tools, sessions, memory that can blow up your token usage very fast. Even if it doesn't look like much, it can multiply depending on how many tools you use and how much memory you pass along. And creating your own manager, Solstix, it doesn't only manage the workers, it also manages what they need to remember. And we don't want the workers to carry out memory. Each worker should only focus on the task right in front of them, nothing else. When they finish, they should forget and move on. This saves tokens, keeps things cheaper, 
and avoid ugly errors like the horrible 500 error. To build a manager, we import what we need from Google ADK. The runner, the in-memory session, as in work, variables like the API key, plus our agents in the database class. We will also lob everything so we can track what happens step by step. Then we define the agents the manager is in charge of, and we create our main function run all. That's the function we trigger when we run the package. Let's look at the flow. And we start with the gathering agent. I run this one item by item, not in batches. Batches can cause errors. One by one is easier to debug. And since models are cheap, it's fine. So here's what happens. The manager takes a job from the database, set up a session with an app name and session ID, creates a runner for the gathering agent, and passes the sanitized HTML as input. The agent extracts the text, the manager takes that text and writes it back to the database, and if it fails, the pipeline continues and we can see later what went wrong. Let's take a look at the triage agent. The flow is actually very similar, but here we show a different style. Again, we have the prompt for the agent with a little bit of more information, and after running, it writes directly into the database. Not best practice, as I said before, but I want to show you that this is possible. The problem is if the agent fails, the whole system fails. Unlike the gathering agent where the manager handles errors more graceful. Please ignore this part. It's just some fallback code and we are not using it today. And once everything runs, the manager confirms success. That is our pipeline. Gather takes, trash the story and lock the results. All coordinated by the managers. Now let's fire it up. Let's review it. We see all the 15 use with the AI suggestion. I can change the position. I can change the status. I have the full text of the news and the reasoning of the AI, what this article is actually flagged as a suggestion. This is so cool. This is awesome. And it took like, uh, actually like three minutes, something like that. We've just built a system of AI agents that solves a real life problem. And now it's your turn because ADK is super flexible. You can connect to any database, run it in the cloud or locally, choose any model you like, Gemini, OpenAI, even local ones. And ADK handles the heavy lifting for you. If you have an MCP server, you can even connect ADK with MCP tools. The possibilities are huge. And this is only the beginning. When you are ready to go further, don't miss my next video. I will share every mistake I made so you don't have to, and you will be building 10 times faster. If you find this helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.